Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be answering some questions I get frequently about vinegar. So what I have going on here is I have several different vinegars, uh, some that I need to filter out today, some that I filtered out not too long ago, some that are bottled. Let me start off with the first question that I get quite a bit. And people talk about uh, they, they kind of freak out. I understand. No, I'm, not, I'm not, not making fun of you. But they'll come in and say, help, I'm getting black mold, something black growing on top of my vinegar. And I'm seeing that a lot, that question come in a lot on the raisin vinegar in particular, which is an older video. And I say that because even though I've been making vinegar for quite a few years, even since I started my YouTube channel, I have since change the way that I make my vinegar. And so if you want to know how I'm doing it now, I'll go ahead and link to my most recent vinegar making video right up here so you can see how I do it. I go into more detail and all that, but I do make it differently. Now typically when I've made raisin vinegar, I've never had problems with the fruit floating to the top like I do with almost all my other fruit vinegars. They always, they would float up and down, but they wouldn't float to the top and stay up there. Now, when that happens and your fruit floats to the top and stays there and you're not stirring it, then eventually it will develop mold. This is not anything to be afraid of. The mold will start off as white and then and green and then as it ages and kind of dies off, it'll turn black on top. What that means is the vinegar is actually killing the mold. It's not black mold like you worry about as far as, you know, growing in your house and people are, you know, it can be deadly or make you very sick or whatever. It's not the same kind of mold. It's very different. It's only black because it's dead and dried. And so it's not to be concerned. So you have a couple options. If, if you did it the way I, I used to always do it and just let it sit and not stir it, just let it sit for 30 days and when 30 days I strained it out. What I typically would do was lift all the stuff off the top if it was moldy, which sometimes it wasn't. It just would depend. It just depends on how much of the fruit or herbs and stuff sits up on top of the water. You have to realize that if it's truly vinegar, anything below that surface is going to be killed. There's not going to be any mold under there because the vinegar will naturally kill all the mold. So you can just gently lift that off there and, and toss it. And even if you get a little bit of mold that falls into the vinegar, it's still going to get killed by the vinegar. But if that still concerns you and you're still a little bit squeamish about that, then what I recommend is going the next step. Uh, when you start making your vinegar, uh, for the first two weeks at least, I recommend you stir it every single day. And that will do a couple of things. And I, I go over that in some of my other videos, but you stir it, it's going to prevent the mold from building on top because you just keep stirring it every day and getting that work down in there. What's happening is as the vinegar, as the sugar in the water is, is turning into alcohol, it's forming bubbles and the bubbles are filling up the fruit and all that stuff and it's pushing it to the top. So basically what you have to do is keep working those bubbles out of that and then working the fruit back down in there. But the other good thing about stirring, one of the other good things, is that it helps to aerate the vinegar. What turns sugar water and fruit water into vinegar is the constant aeration. It needs to be exposed to oxygen. That's why you don't use any kind of pickling top or airlock or anything like that. That's what you do if you want to turn it to wine. But wine, when it's been exposed to oxygen, is going to turn to vinegar. So that's the whole process of vinegar, going from, from sugar to alcohol to vinegar. It, that's, that's the process. So that is what's happening in the bubbling phase. It is, it is turning into wine at that point. And then the third reason why it's a good idea to stir every day, and some people have had issues with this, is that as those air bubbles keep pushing that fruit and those herbs up to the top of the jar, it's going to start pushing the liquid up and out too and you'll have an overflow. And so some people have just put plates under theirs. However, if you're stirring it daily, that's not going to happen. So though the stir method requires a little more extra time each day 
because and and attentiveness and thinking to get in there and stir it at least once a day twice is good too but once is once is usually plenty uh, that it's going to keep all that from happening you won't have to worry with overflow you won't have to worry about mold and it does seem to help speed up the process a little bit more uh, the more sugar you use is going to slow down the process but it's also going to give you a stronger result at the end I'm to the point now that whenever I'm using an herb based vinegar like this one is mostly herb based it has lemons in it then I I put a half cup of sugar at least and I may go check it I may add more sugar to it um, I don't do that all the time now I I was talking about that in that video that I linked to up there um, but I really don't haven't been doing that so much in these last batches now summertime is when I have most of my vinegar going and I didn't think I was going to want to do the stir method but since I prefer it I'm finding I like it for so many reasons I just set up a table in my big workroom in there and that's where I was doing all my vinegars over the summer now that we're getting into uh, we're in the fall we're getting to the time of year that I may have one or two vinegars going at a time um, those will probably do mostly on top of my refrigerator or starting here on the counter for at least the first two weeks so I remember to stir it daily I have to have these things in sight I can't just write it down either I have to have these things visual for me so that I can look at it and go yep I, that's right I need to stir it so you have to find what works for you as far as that however leaving your vinegar to just sit and form uh, you will have to possibly face mold and yes, less you use weights there's some very expensive weights you can use that will keep your your stuff under the liquid so it doesn't mold um, you can use a find a good rock a flat rock somebody mentioned that in another video I've done that before but I have not found one good method that always kept kept it underneath sometimes you're still going to have overflow you're still going to have those bubbles pushing it up so uh, you know for me that little extra step of stirring every day just saved a lot of time in other things time and cleanup of overspilled vinegar uh, time and having to worry about the mold and getting it off or not that I worried about it that much but at any rate you don't have to worry about the mold so coming back to that it's really not a concern it's not going to hurt you it just depends on how squeamish you are about it if, if you don't want to deal with it do the stir method uh, use weights but they're not they're not always I don't care what weight they are they're not always foolproof now uh, the white layer a lot of times you'll see a white layer especially a gelatinous layer now that is totally normal and should be expected none of these since these are all to the point that they're vinegar none of these have that same white layer that I'm thinking of that I wanted to show you uh, but they do have a white layer but it's not the same thing if you see this kind of really thin white layer that's kind of it might even look a little bit splotchy that is your cam yeast it may look very dry on top kind of have almost a beige color really not so much pure white uh, and that is again totally normal I mean this is based off of a yeast ferment and so that's what's happening and, and you'll probably see that develop sometimes at the top of your vinegars after you've already put them in storage and that's totally normal nothing to be concerned about and the same applies to this white layer that you see right here that is actually a mother forming but all of these here to some extent have a mother in them this one is no longer floating at the very top it's actually down here right on top of the fruit this is the peach vinegar you would have saw me making in my uses for peaches I'll go ahead and link to that video up here and so here's the other thing I found about using the stir method is I'm more likely to develop to develop a mother during the vinegar making process rather than having it develop after I've already filtered out and jarred it and so that's why after two weeks typically you don't have to worry about stirring it for one the bubbliness stopped and also as the mother forms it just makes this nice little protective layer that keeps all the fruit and stuff from floating to the top and developing mold so it's it's really it's just really a good method to use the stir method so that mother 
that's your SCOBY. That is something that you do not need to be concerned about. It's healthy. It should be expected. You can save it. Uh, some people mentioned how they save theirs and reuse them to, it's not necessarily, it's not needed to get your vinegar started. You don't need it, but you can put it in your next batch right on the top to help uh, prevent your fruits and stuff from floating to the top. But if you're going to use a stir method, well, you don't need it anyway, and it's just going to get in the way if you do that. And eventually the vinegar you're making with the stir method is going to form one. But these ones that I haven't strained out, have a mother in them. This actually has two because it has one real thin one starting to form at the top and then there's another one right in here. Now another question I get asked now and then is do I need sugar to make vinegar? Can I use stevia? No, you cannot use stevia in replacement of sugar when it comes to vinegar making because yes, you need sugar of some sort. Whether it be just pure fruit that you're using or honey or organic cane sugar like I like to use, you have to have sugar in order to make vinegar. I know people ask this question a lot because they're trying to stay away from sugar completely, but no matter how sugar avoidant you feel you need to be, it does have its place in our health and in our diet. It's just not overloading on it in its refined form is the big deal. But as far as, I mean, if you're still eating fruit, you're still getting sugar. And vinegar, once it is done, should not have any sugar left in it because the sugar is what gets converted into vinegar. So you have to have that. But it's no longer sugar at that point. It's vinegar. It's something far more healthy for you in that way. So if you're concerned about sugar because you're trying to stay away from it dietary-wise, you shouldn't be concerned about it in that way. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to raise your glycemic level because it's now no longer sugar once it's become vinegar. But yes, it is necessary, and stevia does not have sugar in it. It's su naturally sweet, but there's no sugar in it, so it cannot be used as a replacement for fermenting of any kind. Uh, you can ferment stevia, but the sugar, there's no sugar in it to ferment. I mean, there may be small amounts, but not like you would have in fruit or cane sugar or honey. So when you're talking vinegar, stevia is not going to be a good replacement. If you're wanting to make wine, same thing. You need to have sugar to make wine. It's, it, it, wine and vinegar are based off the same type of ferment. Okay, now another question I get a lot is um, when people, they filter out their, their vinegar, they put it in a bottle, and then they're, they go to open it sometime later and it's, it explodes or it's still fizzy. Well, what happened there is that um, you didn't let the process finish. Maybe you just stuck to the, to the standard 30 days and thought, okay, it's done. Well, it wasn't done. It needed to uh, continue to ferment longer. But it doesn't mean you have to start the process all over again. You can still use that. It is still good. It's just somewhere in between the vinegar and wine stage. So what I recommend, instead of putting it back in a jar and letting it finish fermenting or finish turning into vinegar, just use it for saute. Using the, uh, the unfinished vinegar where it's at, somewhere in that in-between process is really great for, for sauteing in and for using as a marinade. There's a lot of things that you can do with that. So it's totally up to you. Yes, you can put it back in a jar and maybe even add some more sugar and let it ferment again. Give it at least a good two weeks. Uh, you just have to really keep an eye on it. If it's bubbly, it's not completely done. It may be mostly vinegar. It may taste like vinegar and smell like vinegar, but if it's still bubbly, then that means the uh, yeast and the bacteria is all still feeding off the sugar and converting it. That's what's happening there. But it is still good. Don't throw it out. <laughs> okay, and then another question I get frequently is how do I use all of my vinegars? As you can see here, this one here, this is a floral vinegar. It's made with uh, rose petals and lavender and pansies, calendula. I have another one here that is just rhubarb and calendula really nice color and then I'll have like this here is my raisin vinegar from last year this is using the no stir method and it's still really good 
though not near as strong and acidic as the vinegars I've been making lately. But the the good thing about that is the raisin is also my favorite for sautéing, so I don't mind if it's not really strong, really acidic. Now I cover, <laughs> I do cover in another video all the ways. I think I covered all the ways. <laughs> I use my vinegars because I use them for many different things. I'll go ahead and link to that video right up here so you can go watch that. But just to, to mention a few things, I use it for cleaning, I use it for cooking, I use it for baking. Uh, as I said, I go into more details on how I do that in that video. But one of the things I like to do is put it in this bottle right here. I have several of these now and yes, these have been really good bottles for me. I could get them on the subscribe and save program on Amazon and save a little bit more on them doing it that way and you get three at a time. And so I have several of these filled with vinegar, one in my bathroom back here, one in my kitchen. So typically what I do when I'm straining out the vinegar is I use one of these mesh strainers like this over an eight cup measuring cup or batter bowl as it's also known. And I will link to those items below where you can find like the three piece set of this. It's really great for that. And I'll just, I'll just strain it out and then toss the pieces, especially it's fruit. I'll toss the pieces out to the chickens and they'll eat them. Or if it's uh, herbs, sometimes I'll just throw them in different uh, as compost in different plants and stuff. Now, if I'm going to use it for cleaning with, then what I want to do is I want to, usually after the initial strain out, whatever I decide to put into my spray bottle, I'm going to go ahead and strain it again using the mesh strainer after it's all rinsed out and maybe a double layer of cloth. I like to use 100% cotton, double layered, maybe even triple layered, in this and that will get out all those little pieces because you want to keep them out of your bottle your spray bottle so they don't clog up your hose and up in here because I've had that happen before and had to take the sprayer completely apart and clean it out and and then fill and then I filtered out the vinegar better that way so you want to make sure if you're gonna put it in a spray bottle you do the cloth method otherwise for everything else uh, I recommend just using this because it's okay if you get some of those fruit pieces and stuff in there if you're using it for cooking and things like that because it's actually going to be really good for you. So just, you know, just kind of depends on how you're going to use it. Okay, so after I finished out this video, I remembered one more question that I didn't even think to write down that I get frequently, and that is how long do the vinegars last? How do I store them? Actually, a couple of different questions. Now, I store them. I just got done filtering out three jars, uh, three half gallon jars of my peach vinegar and I've so far with the filtered out vinegar I've fil filled two half gallon jars so I have a whole gallon here and then I have one more jar of peach vinegar to uh, filter out. So I store them like this, I store them in a dark cabinet in my pantry, steel cabinet that has doors on it so it stays dark in there all the time and that is where I store my big jars like this once they're all done. As far as bottles like this, these are the ones I typically keep here in the kitchen in another cabinet. I do not store them in the fridge. Now you can do that if you want. Uh, it's really going to depend on the acidity of your vinegar. You want to try to get your vinegar to uh, a pH of 4.5, which is going to be at least, or lower, which is going to be at least a 5% acidity on your vinegar and that's what you're trying to shoot for. You're going to have a longer shelf life. You're going to be use, able to use it for more things if you do that. And so it should last for quite a long time. I say at least a year. I typically work through all of my vinegars within a year. Now I will say that I have had some vinegars go bad after a few months and those are the ones that never got real acidic and before I started using the stir method and adding more sugar uh, I would have a few that would go bad during the year and you know it because then it will develop mold on top of the strained out vinegar and it will lose all flavor there's no more tartness to it it's just very it's almost like just kind of a nasty tasting water there's there's absolutely no acidity left in it and that's why mold can grow on it at that point so it it needs to be tossed then so you'll know but I just don't have room to store all this in my refrigerator because I always have so much going and now that I've got my you know and it's rare that I've ever had batches go bad 
but when I have a good high acidity, a really good vinegar, and even this one wasn't a super high acidity, and it's over a year old, and it's still good. There's nothing wrong with it. I would think it would could last for a couple of years or more, but again, it depends on the acidity, and uh, me, I'm typically working through all of them within a year, and so I can't tell you for sure how much longer after that they will last if not refrigerated. I think in the refrigerator they should last pretty much indefinitely. But anyway, so there's that. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. And go ahead and share with us down below what you like to use your vinegar for, maybe what your favorite types of vinegar are to make and how you use them. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.